Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of atomic structure, and in particular, on fundamental particles. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of three in this tutorial. Fundamental Particles. This is the first in a series of three tutorials covering atomic structure. We'll be looking at mass number and isotopes and electron configuration in the next two tutorials. We've got a few key learning objectives to cover in this tutorial. Firstly, we'll look at elements, then we'll move on to the constituents of an atom, and finally, we will look at relative charge and relative mass. These are the specification points that we'll be covering in this tutorial. It's a good idea for you to pause the video now and have a read through each point before we cover them in more detail. Firstly, we will be looking at the different types of elements. Here, we can see three kinds of elements. The first is nitrogen, the next one is chlorine, and the final one is oxygen. Elements are made up of atoms, and each element is made up of one type of atom in particular. As we can see here, the element oxygen is made up only of oxygen atoms. We'll now cover the next specification point, which concerns protons, neutrons and electrons. On this atom, we can see various kinds of subatomic particles. We'll identify them one by one. The first kind of particle is an electron. The next particle we'll identify is a neutron. The final subatomic particle we need to know is the proton. All atoms consist of subatomic particles protons, neutrons, and electrons. We'll now be looking at the relative charges and masses of each subatomic particle. It's important to remember we're only using the relative masses and charges of these particles, not the actual values. We'll be looking at the protons first. So our subatomic particle is the proton. This has a relative charge of plus one and a relative mass of one. Next, we'll look at neutrons. These have a relative charge of zero but they have a relative mass the same as a proton, which would be one. Our last subatomic particle is the electron. The electron has a negative charge compared to the proton and neutron. 
It's actually the opposite, so it's minus one. The relative mass of the electron is negligible. This means that the value is very close to zero. This is a pretty handy table to have for your revision, so I'd recommend that you pause the video now to take a quick note of it. As we've seen, each of the subatomic particles has a relative mass and a relative charge. The actual values of the particles are way too small for us to be able to use. It's much more useful for us to be able to use these relative values, as it allows us to compare the values of the particles to each other. The nucleus is found at the centre of the atom. On this diagram, the nucleus would be found here. As we've just seen, the nucleus is at the very centre of the atom. From our previous diagrams, you may be able to recall that we can find both protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. We'll now move on to covering our final spec point, which concerns the overall structure of an atom. We'll be putting together all the knowledge that we've just learnt. From this diagram, we can see that the electrons are found around the outside of the nucleus. Unlike protons and neutrons, electrons are found around the outside of the nucleus we can say that they are found in orbitals surrounding it. Electrons can be found at different energy levels. The distance of the electron will represent a different energy level. We've now covered all the specification points in this tutorial. If you're unsure about anything that we've covered, feel free to skip back to that section and revisit these ideas. We've now completed lesson one. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-level chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.